The 90s are well known for being arguably the best time for hip hop. The music was eclectic. We had a variety of groups like A Tribe Called Quest, Wu-Tang Clan and Bone Thugs in Harmony and solo artists like Nas, Tupac and Biggie. We had the popularization of G-Funk on the west coast thanks to people like Dr. Dre and underground artists like 3-6 Mafia in the south with their unique sound who are till this day one of the most sampled groups of all time. One of the biggest things that was often talked about and sensationalized by news outlets in particular was the east coast west coast beef that was brewing since the early 90s however. I've talked about the beef in the Tim Dog vs Compton video which is where things started. We got plenty of tracks back and forth from west coast and east coast artists, most notably songs like Tim Dog's F Compton and Tupac's Hit Em Up among others. In the 90s, a rapper from the West Coast was starting to make a name for himself with a knack for lyricism and seeming to have a penchant for history given both his rap name and lyrical content. That being Razcast from Carson, California. If you don't know, Carson is a city in Los Angeles County and is probably most well known in hip hop for being the home of TDE and also several rappers or singers of note have lived there like Brandy, The Game, and TDE signee Ab Soul. Raz Cash released his debut album, Soul on Ice, in October 1996. The album was named after the 1968 book of the same name by Eldridge Cleaver from the Black Panther Party. The album is full of tracks like On Earth As It Is and Ordo Abkeo, not to mention the iconic nature of the threat. One song in particular though is the reason why I made this video and I'm going to break it down. That track is Sunset, which is his response to the East Coast West Coast beef. To me, it's easily one of the best songs on the album, one of the best responses to the East Coast West Coast feud, and one of the least talked about tracks for whatever reason. I never see it mentioned when the coastal rap feud is discussed. This album was released a month before Tupac's Seven Day Theory, which included multiple shots of the East Coast like Bomb First and my favorite Against All Odds. Pac had a much more straightforward and blunt approach, like several other artists at this time. Razcast on Sunset took a different approach one much more lyrically driven. So let's break down this hidden gem from a dang good album released at a time when things in hip hop were more than just a bit rocky. First off, Sunset is placed right in the middle of the album at track 7 out of 13 and it's the third longest track on the album clocking at 6 minutes. So it's clear Raz had a lot to get off his chest about the situation. First off, the production on this track fits it well. According to the credits, this track was produced by Michael Flip Barber. Michael Schlesinger, Razcast, and Reno De La Juan, so definitely props to them for that. It samples the drums from the song You're Getting a Little Too Smart by the Detroit Emeralds, which is sampled in a lot of other songs too, like The Light by Common, Looking at the Front Door by Main Source, and You Ain't Gotta Lie to Kick It by Kendrick Lamar. This beat is haunting, the ghostly wailing in the background underneath Raz's boastful bars truly give an eerie feeling to the track. I've listened to this song in the middle of the night so many times it's not even funny. It's truly one of my favorite songs by Raz. On the intro of the track, he takes a quote from the iconic diss track No Vaseline by fellow West Coast rapper Ice Cube aimed at NWA released in 1991 from Cube's second album Death Certificate, a top 10 diss track and personally in my own top 5 probably. He goes on to say that we should elevate, not segregate, making it pretty clear that he's not too fond of the separation of East and West and specifies that there's just certain people out there that are really dissing the West Coast and this song is aimed at them. The main person dissing from the East Coast had been Tim Dog on his debut album like I mentioned earlier. New York rap duo CNN also dissed the West Coast on the track LA LA featuring Mob Deep and Tragedy Gaddafi. The whole East Coast vs West Coast thing was not really played out in a lot of diss tracks honestly outside of Tupac sending numerous shots and it was something that was hyped up by the media. Let's get back to the breakdown of the song though. For the chorus, Raz has the lines, now I'm a rap fan who never saw Bam rock the park in the Bronx but I still snap skulls in the dark. That is a reference to the founder of the Universal Zulu Nation, Africa Bambata from the South Bronx and how he's credited as one of the pioneers of hip hop. He's known for going from being a member of the street gang, the Black Spades, to then forming the Zulu Nation with several members of the gang following him. This being the chorus is significant because for one it shows that Raz Kaz is quite aware of his hip hop history but also is well aware that just because he isn't from New York that doesn't mean he isn't a part of hip hop or less deserving of respect. Raz comes out the gate ready with an aggressive flow and the lyrical prowess that he's known for. He starts off with the lines, 
So can you recognize shit is real when I shove this Ampex 499 up your rectum? I'm ready to bust every bitch nigga's cherry. See these floods in January got me looking in the mirror screaming bloody Mary. Unnecessary representing equals set tripping. Divided by my tennis shoe pimping. Got all y'all niggas dipping like Lipton tea bags, son. Probably self-explanatory starting lines and quite on point. Unnecessary representing equals set tripping is a comparison of the East Coast and West Coast banging their sets like two rival gangs would do. Basically, Raz pushing back at New York rappers for mentioning the West Coast in a negative light. The verse continues on with the lines, His stilo Jeet Kune Do, the way of the intercepting fist intercepting every subliminal diss, geographic prejudice against increments of incredulous legislature, psychologically I masturbate with the hands of fate so bust nuts on mother nature, coming on your landscape, I'm pressing California license plates for niggas in all 50 fucking states, but it's biting me and fighting me inviting me to rhyme, I can't hold it back, I'm looking for the line. Jeet Kune Do is a style of martial arts and Raz here is calling out the east coast for throwing subliminal shots at the west. Geographic prejudice against increments of incredulous legislature is a great way of saying that the east coast is basically hating on the west coast just for being a different region. The lines about biting, fighting, inviting the rhyme and whatnot are from the song Eric B for President by Eric B and Rakim from their debut album Paid in Full released in 1987. Once again, Raz showing that he has some knowledge of hip hop history and Rakim and Eric B being from New York clearly showing that he doesn't have a bias against the east coast rappers just like with his mentioning of Africa Bambata in the chorus. Then Raz has the lines, taking off my lambskin Mark Buchanan because I'ma make you see LA like Ed O'Bannon. Nigga come in peace and brothers can kick it, but you ain't gonna walk my streets when back east you selling wolf tickets. Make you see LA like Ed O'Bannon is a clever line as Ed O'Bannon was a player on the UCLA basketball team back in the 90s. A quick LA sports reference right there, but also Ed O'Bannon wound up playing for the New Jersey Nets, so once again, the whole East Coast, West Coast thing. Then the lines about coming in peace are self-explanatory. If you're not dissing the West, then go ahead and visit. But if you're with the dissing, then stay home pretty much. He ends the first verse with the lines, Reciprocate the player hate and bring the bullshit to you, going through your coast like the green Gary Gnu, who said, No good news is good good news, but good niggas is good not knowing about the connect shit that I be flowing. So don't represent at my expense, it's too expensive. The first and last line of my defense is my sentence. You got caught off the coast of the Pacific Ocean, found face down, floating with your fucking neck broken. Those first lines are a reference to the character Gary Gnu from the children's TV series The Great Space Coaster, which first aired in the 80s. The coast is both a reference to the East Coast yet again, as well as the title of the TV show, and adding the G in front of the words was something the character did on the show. No canoes whatsoever. <laughs> Today, here's what's not happening in transportation. The first and last line of defense being his sentence is a metaphor for his lyrical ability and that's what he's going to fall back on. Then of course there's the line following it about getting caught off the coast of the Pacific Ocean face down with their neck broken which is a reference to the west coast as California and the other western states border the Pacific Ocean while the eastern states border the Atlantic Ocean and it is a callback to the chorus where he mentions snapping skulls. Now before I get into the second verse, think about how diss tracks were around this time if you want to call this a diss track that is. It's definitely a response track though. At this point, like I said, tracks like Against All Odds, Hit Em Up, and plenty others, especially by Tupac, were already out or would wind up being leaked later on. In case you just never heard one of these tracks before, let me just pull an excerpt out for you real quick. I've done a video before on how I don't think Hit Em Up is the best diss track of all time, so let's use that song for reference since so many people hail it as the greatest. Don't get me wrong though, it is good, just not the best diss track of all time to me. From the intro of Hit Em Up, we have the lines, I ain't got no motherfucking friends, that's why I fuck your bitch you fat motherfucker. Which of course was aimed at Biggie, or the outro where he goes off on Junior Mafia, Mob Deep, Chino XL, and New York rappers in general. Oh yeah, Mob Deep, <laughs> you wanna fuck with us? You little young ass motherfuckers, don't wonder you niggas got sickle cell or something. You fuck with me nigga, you fuck around have a seizure or a heart attack. You better back the fuck up before you get smacked the fuck up. It's how we do it on our side. Any of you niggas from New York that wanna bring it, bring it. But we ain't singing, we bringing drama. Fuck you and your motherfucking mama. We gonna kill all you motherfuckers. Now when I came out, I told you it was just about Biggie. Then everybody had to open their mouth with a motherfucker opinion. Well this how we gonna do this. Fuck Mob Deep. 
Fuck Biggie, fuck Bad Boy as a staff, record label, and as a motherfucking crew. And if you want to be down with Bad Boy, then fuck you too. I'm like, what do you say fuck me for? Okay, maybe not the best example actually. Tupac clearly had some problems with New York rappers despite being born there. I mean, he got shot there, so hey, I'm not mad at it. I would be pretty angry too. To be fair, songs like this were also direct diss tracks rather than a simple response or reaction to the whole situation going on. As you can see, there's been no real attack made on someone so far from Raz on this song. Now, let me get to the second verse. He starts the verse off with as much ferocity and lyrical excellence as he did with the first. I walk the planet and create tremors. If nothing else, here's all you need to remember. LLA apostrophe Y LLA KCUF for all you backwards ass niggas. Psychologically, we grapple an MC like Gracie at the UFC. So place me in your octagon, cowards. On mixtapes and interviews, I'm hearing you certain dissidents diss from a distance. That line is fuck all y'all backwards. And the Gracie line is about the UFC fighter Royce Gracie. The octagon refers to the shape of the UFC ring. The line about cowards on mixtapes and interviews is a reference to East Coast rappers who had something to say about the West Coast. One example is a freestyle that Q-Tip from A Tribe Called Quest did in 1995, which has the line, To you West Coast haters, we will bust your shit. Even that line from Q-Tip wasn't a direct diss to one person necessarily, compared to tracks by Tupac in 96 where it was a lot more personal. Raz then has the lines, disrespect and discriminate, nigga I laminate that ass and wear it at the new music seminar for a badge, mash or get twisted, them go on front like Rosa Parks but them marks is broke wristed. The new music seminar is a music conference that was held in New York City every year from 1980 to 1995. Raz likely attended it before his album release for networking or promotional purposes. The Rosa Parks line is a reference to how she refused to sit in the back of the bus. Fronting of course is to be fake or put on an act. So that's just some wordplay there with the civil rights icon and the fronting rappers that Raz takes issue with throughout the song. The following lines really highlight once again his respect for rap originators but dislike for the attitude that some other east coast artists have taken on the situation. Superiority complex based on old statistics. Now listen, respect due to the pioneers, but what your borough did in 83 is ancient history, bruh. So why are these niggas acting like since they live in a state that rap originates, they automatically all time greats? It takes classic material to make fat shit, not proof of New York residents and an accent. Essentially, just because hip hop started in New York, that doesn't mean New Yorkers should think they're better than other regions, and you can't just ride the coattails of someone else's success because you're from the same area. You gotta be nice with it yourself. As someone born in New York themselves, it's a fair point. Pride for your neighborhood can only go so far. Raz goes back to then repping the West Coast with the lines, Who expresses the freshest? The West Coast was resurrected by me. I'm the motherfucking man like homo erectus. So why it matter where rap started? If I wanted to hear from the asshole, I would've farted. I'm a West Coast artist, down with clicks from 510 to 516. But this indiscriminately and you diss me. Rass is taking claim to resurrecting the West Coast, which wasn't necessarily dead at this time, but I guess you could say it wasn't as big as it was in the early 90s of NWA releasing their second album and Dre and Snoop releasing their debut albums. At the time of the album release, Tupac had just recently been murdered and he was the premier West Coast artist at the time. But I can't say for sure when this song was recorded. Homo erectus is recognized as one of the earliest species of what would pretty much be considered humans. The area code 510 is for the East Bay in California and 516 is for Nassau County in New York. Once again, a reference to the East and West Coast. Also to diss discriminately would be to diss without much of a specific target. In this case, dissing the whole coast. So Raz is stating that he is taking it personally if you diss his region, and you should basically just call out names and be direct, or you risk getting dissed by him. He ends the verse with the lines, Fundamentally is the ability to smother suckers, so if rap was born to another, then that makes me a motherfucker, cause I'm the type of nigga to go to your show, fuck yo ho, that nut on your promotional t-shirt. Alert the solar eclipse, the planet Earth eternally verbally, I fucks your head up like Florence in Normandy normally. First off, rappers' fascination with other men's women just continues with lines like this. Besides that, I don't know what he's talking about with the solar eclipse and earth, but it's more than likely another lyrical brag. The Florence and Normandy line is a reference to the Rodney King riots where during the riots, a white man by the name of Reginald Denny was beaten on the intersection of the streets Florence and Normandy and his skull was fractured. Those riots happened in 1992 and tossing in a line like this really shows how they weren't far removed 
from that situation or the violence and injustice going on in LA in general. That's it really for the lyrics of this song. It's really one of my favorite songs by Razcast once again and shows how you can represent for your coast and bite back without having to pick out any particular individual like other rappers did. For another juxtaposition, let's take the track Fuck Compton by Tim Dog, which essentially started the whole conflict. He really did say some things out of frustration of the West Coast getting a lot of attention in rap and was seen as a publicity stunt, getting a whole video for the song and everything with the burning of the Compton hat and mocking of people like Michelle, who wasn't even a rapper and was just a singer signed to Ruthless Records and Dr. Dre's girlfriend at the time. Don't get it twisted, I like that song too but they're very different takes on the whole situation is what I'm saying. Once again, this is one of my favorite songs involved in the whole East Coast West Coast feud without a doubt. It's truly underappreciated and I've been thinking about that for a while now so I just had to talk about it. If you like my breakdown of the song, Razkaz himself has a breakdown of it among other songs of his on his YouTube channel. If you heard this song before, let me know in the comment section below your thoughts on it. If you haven't heard it yet, go give it a listen. As usual, make sure you subscribe to the channel, click the thumbs up button to like the video, check the links in the description below to join the Discord server, become a channel member or patron, and follow on other platforms.